I'm Christian Abbott. I'm Nathan Lavender. I'm Sean Abbott. And this is the Red Mist Podcast. Hello, welcome to the Red Mist Podcast, Season 3, Episode 40. The Wayne Taylor Racing, Acura, ARX06, GTP car, Dex Imaging, driven by Jordan Taylor and Louis Delatraz. And on occasion, Colton Herter. car was victorious at the Sebring 12 Hours. Sadly, that car is moving on from Wayne Taylor Racing over to Meyer Shank racing. Mm-hmm. It's going, and we'll, uh, going back to Meyer Shank. Back racing? to Meyer Shank, yeah. yes. Yep. Uh, we will, uh, along with a, they have one new car too, I guess. Um, so we'll have three, two car effort, you know, obviously you have a backup car. Um, and we'll talk more about that lineup, which was announced over the weekend. Tonight's episode, we'll talk NASCAR at the Roval. cutoff race we're down to eight mm. i know you're excited very <laughs> was a little bit of controversy for the post-race being there, there uh, is di- disqualification there's no controversy in nascar it is only never never only the product they want to put forward yep. that's is... that's correct it's the second coming of the wwe mm-hmm. um We'll talk IMSA, season finale, Petit Le Mans. A fantastic finish once again. The final two hours of that race do not disappoint. The whole race doesn't disappoint, but the final two are just, the, the level just gets amped up. Yeah. And it gets, it gets, I, I don't know. I like it on that track because it's so freaking dark <laughs> and the elevation changes and everything. It's it's awesome. Yeah. Key, um, key word there, dark. <laughs> dark. Very dark. <laughs> like spa dark. Fevering dark. Um. We'll touch on the great race down under the Bathurst 1000. It was a uh, it was truly a race. There was minimal yellow flags. One did come at the end of the race to kind of set up the final 30 minutes, but uh, a fantastic race overall, as it always is. Run just under six hours. Pretty cool. And then we'll uh, talk news and notes. And look ahead to this weekend to Kuta. We'll have our picks. Yes. Demon Nate has sent his picks in. Uh, yeah, he has. Not like he he has, has a daily or anything like that. No, no. <laughs> um, he, uh, he has his picks in. We'll make ours. Uh, we'll also look ahead. Well, we won't look ahead, but some other racing events this weekend is uh, NASCAR. At Las Vegas, uh, we'll have uh, four hours of Portimao this weekend for the ALMS series. Yes. So I'm very excited about that. A yes. fantastic track. That'll be good. Um, and then uh, for you diehard YouTube race fans who need your fix over the weekend nights, uh, the World Touring Car Championship concludes at Zuhao in China. All right. Let's go to the, let's go to the Roval. And uh, one word, Kyle Larson, or two words, sorry, Kyle Larson, or Young Money, <laughs> Domination. Yeah. One on the road course, cemented his place into the uh, final eight with the win. Uh, I, I know we had kind of talked about this, uh, the track uh, prior to the show. Uh, not our favorite. Uh-uh. Not, not our favorite. Uh, they they changed it up this year. Uh, they added a a hairpin, uh, which was just dumb. <laughs> it's just dump city. It's like why couldn't they just make a you know a, a, a serious point? You know, 
Or what, what, what is it now? Sonoma. Sonoma. It's serious point to me. Yeah. Anyways, or Xfinion, or whatever. Oh, Inf- anyways. Infineon. No, Infineon. It, it, it's uh, now Sonoma. It was Infineon. Uh, Infineon. Infineon. Sponsors of yeah. the Audi. Great Audi. Yes. Uh, what, what do they call those? Hybrid H, H1 car? G, what they weren't GTP. They weren't LMDH. They were... LMP1. Hybrid. LMP1. Yeah, sorry. Jeez. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. I Yeah, really. I mean, really? I, I'll... I'll be honest. The other day, I I had a complete brain fart that those cars existed for a bit yeah. just because of how good the racing in today's <laughs> prototype class has been going. Yeah. Well, I was less than thrilled with the changes that NASCAR made to the track. I I didn't. I mean, if you want to watch guys get crashed into and stuff like that, uh, that's fine. Um, yeah. The the redo of the last chicane with the overly huge uh, um, curbing uh, that sent William Byron into flight. And into, um, I think it was like Chase Briscoe, um, and then damaged both cars, um, and then ultimately led to Byron being disqualified because they they feel that some whatever happened there was what caused the car to have the weight issues. So some of the weight in the car may have fallen out. Mm -hmm. Um, We had the back uh, backside chicane, yeah, okay, not that great. The the hairpin was was dumb. The the backside, I mean, if they're going to continue to race at this track, it, the the track has gotten better since the first iteration of it, but I feel like they've made changes to this track every single year. Yeah. So it's, it, I don't know. I mean, again, the, the, I'm always by the point that I think they should just forego this track and just pick up a real race track um or road, yeah. road track like road america do that road america, road america would be fine um yeah. i mean yeah. i'm sure there's plenty of there's plenty of other roval options out there that you what about go vir to. i would go to vir that would be, I think that would be fine um, either one of those would be insane i mean honestly if if they want actually i wouldn't if if you want to keep a roval on the schedule, I I really don't mind that that Daytona roval that they did. It was it, the whole track. It was well, it? and then and then they added in a chicane. Oh, uh, um, don't no! I hate that. I hate that. No, no, I know. no. And I, but, and, and you get the well, they can't stop the cars. But then I'm going. Guys didn't Mazda MX fives. I, I know. In a five car, like a fifty car draft, yeah. are able to. Maneuver through that, get on brakes and wear them out, and yes. stop the cars. I mean, uh, I I agree with you. I, not, I'd say go to, to Daytona and run it at night. Not not to mention the uh, the Daytona Twenty Four historics that they run as well. Yes, so, right. I Which mean, is coming. That'll about, be in December. Yeah. Uh, that would be yeah. I mean, jeez. Ah, yeah, no. I, I don't. Anyways. I don't buy that that argument. But all they I know, all I they know. want is a. They want a crash fest. Yeah. You know, action, you know, puts puts the uh, contenders in peril and all that. It's kind of stupid, but anyway. I mean, for for uh, the only thing I will say is even though that hairpin was, it it did exactly what it intended to with the chaos it, it created. Um, yep. Not that I think that it was a good chaos that it generated. However, there were some, there were a few shining moments of that corner um mm-hmm. na- namely oh. num- number one the the move that larson made on larson um, yeah. almondinger for the the lead at, t- towards the end of the race i thought that was very good uh well executed and um do- dove into the inside it, lo- it looked like he locked up the rears a little bit but got it slowed down just enough to park it right in front of almondinger yep. stick it on on the apex of the corner and drive off Nothing wrong yeah. with that. No contact, no nothing. It wasn't dirty. Super clean. If that's yep. how it was, if that's how it is the entire race and they enforced penalties for hitting guys and spinning them around, mainly spinning them around, I think it would be fine. But it's not. So you can just take out whoever you want and yeah, not worry about a penalty because the only penalty that you're going to get is 
whenever you inevitably have a caution, the field bunches up, and the guy you took out starts headhunting you. Which, yeah, not not a no. not a fan of that approach. No. All right. Anyways, enough of NASCAR. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, just just to talk about it, the the top top ten we had Larson, Bell, Byron, Cendric, Elliott, Amendinger, Vance Gisbergen, Lugano, uh, Daryl Wallace, and Ryan Blaney. And Byron gets bounced because of a post race infraction. Uh, he falls out of the pace. Logano, who fell out, is in. And Tyler Reddick gets a 10th place finish. Yeah. Okay. Uh, should we just take a quick peek at the championship points as we head to Las Vegas? Um, which I'm expecting. <laughs> Our winner this weekend to be mm. our winner next weekend. <laughs> or he'll be in the top three. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Was... Uh, so Larson uh, Larson had leads at 4,052. Bell's 20 points behind. Reddick, 21. Byron, Byron, 20. Oh, no. Byron stayed in the points. Oh. Who got bounced? Oh, Bowman, Bowman. got bounced. Yeah. Oh. All right. Sorry. Tried to Byron Byron stays in. Well, good for him. He got hosed. Was it him or Bowman? Who got bounced? That was a I don't know. Doesn't matter. Bowman, Anyways, Bowman got bounced. Um, Blaney, Hamlin, Elliott, and Logano are your top eight. And so we head to Vegas for the next uh, race in the chase. We have three races to eliminate. Four drivers? Yes. And we come to championship weekend at Phoenix. Ugh. Whoa. Wow. Whoa. About as inspiring a track as could be. The only good thing is that Martinsville is the race before. E... Oh, okay. That's how they're doing that. Yeah. Well, no, um, but... I just was reminded that the uh the mx5s <laughs> that they're yes their martinsville race is coming up soon but it they, yeah, their yeah. their race is the weekend before nascar gets there because that weekend prior is also when the wheel and door modified cars go there i thought they were running the same weekend as the nascar guys no it, no no it's it's next next weekend is the is the martinsville race for the mx5 cars oh. do we um did I maybe jump the gun? I'm sorry. No, well, it's no. it's it's Vegas, Homestead, then then um, Martinsville. Yes, no, no, you you were right on the NASCAR schedule, um, but I I don't think I didn't think the tour uh, the modifieds run the same weekend as the NASCAR. I thought they do it as a as a preview. Well, yeah, like a, a preview weekend. Uh, it is. You're on. correct. Saturday, October 26th. That'll be fun. You know, I might watch the modified race over the NASCAR race yep. at Homestead. I think that's what yep. I'll do. Yeah. Um, is the... Um, is it a one race or two race event? Uh, checking. Is usually the two race. Yeah, usually the two races. Uh, just hundred laps. We'll join the two hundred lap wheel and modified tour. Oh, that's actually a good race weekend to go to. Because the modified are awesome there. Oh, and the winner gets a clock. Everybody likes that's pretty clock. cool. I think Dale Jr. is going to run. What do you think? In the MX Five race. Yeah, he I, wants to. Yeah, I wouldn't put it past him. Somebody, somebody's gonna, somebody, somebody's gonna. Oh yeah. Imagine if it was Larson, that would be hilarious. <laughs> Just, He's got nothing to well, do. He wants to run. Well, if he, if he, oh, if he wins, wins this Vegas, weekend. Yeah, he yeah, could just, you know, he could <laughs> just he could just cruise in and out of Michigan and pipe it, right? <laughs> Anyways, they'll oh. probably come up with some rule that he can't do that or something. Oh yeah, because he's. Yeah, anyways. But yes, you are correct. All right, we're looking forward to that. All right. 
Okay, we talked enough NASCAR. Yeah. Look forward to the Modifieds and MX-5. <laughs> that's true that, NASCAR. But that's that's not this weekend, next weekend. Next weekend. So we... The 26th. We, we, got, we oh. got to get through Vegas first. Yeah, and then, Vegas. And then All right. next week. We're, we're, we're a little early on this news, but... All right. Let's get to okay. the season finale of IMSA, Petit Le Mans. Yes. 10 hours. We've ditched the 10 hours of 1,000 miles, whatever comes first. Uh, we covered uh, 443 laps, and our winner was the Chip Ganassi Racing Cadillac VR Series, v, v Series R, of uh, Renger Van Zander, Sebastian Bourdais, and Scott Dixon. And it was the Chip Ganassi Cadillac farewell, Amsa. Mm-hmm. As CRG goes on to hiatus, we don't know where they they will reappear. Um, there are several manufacturers looking to join Emsa. Mm-hmm. So, we shall see. Second place went to Porsche Penske. Penske Porsche with Nick Tandy. And um, third went to Philippe Nazar in the number seven car. Fifth okay. going to BMW. So, top top five finish for them. And then the other Cadillac from Wheel and Engineering finished fifth. Good stuff there. I'm sorry, BMW finished fourth? Yes. Okay. That was pretty good. Yeah. Tough weekend for the Acuras. Uh, yeah. I mean, Finished seventh, seventh, and um, oh, well, uh, R- Ricky Taylor's. Yeah, I'm trying to find when they get bounced to. Uh, they finished. Um, Jesus. No bomb. Uh, finished. 41st, ninth in class. Yeah, I mean, they, they got bounced after, after an, an on track. Dubious race. contact. Yeah. On a, I, I think a poor decision from race control. Mm-hmm. Um, that particular car had control of the race and had the optimal strategy. So I, I think that would have been one of our, or if not the contender for the other teams to beat. Yeah. So t- tough way, tough way to go out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, ultimately, he over, just came out of the corner at the bottom of the S's and went to pop yeah, out it was to in the dark. One of the traffic and um, just, it was a spun car sitting yeah, there. Spun car sitting there. He, had, had, been he had no there for nowhere to go. Yeah, and that car apparently had been sitting there, according to drivers and teams, for over thirty seconds. So I don't know what race control was doing. Mm-hmm. So and it was a bad spot. That was not a good spot for that. Mm-hmm. Um, especially if you're tucked up underneath the car and you do what Ricky did when you pull out and you're like, oh. Um, the end of the race, fantastic, with late race drama resulting in the leading car having its headlights go out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that was probably one of the most... Amazing things I've yeah, seen. It, it, was, it was so exciting and tense the in- entire time um so they would they would flash on they would be on and then they would suddenly go off yeah so I, and, obviously and you whatever, when they came back whatever connection was in between the was front in the car and, and yeah. the, the main part of the car was was, was not was snug. Loose. yeah not snug um, um they were they were they apparently there is a ma- another override switch and they told them to turn it on mm-hmm. and i guess it worked but then it um you know, it did start doing the same thing, but he he definitely ran the risk of if he went one more lap with it out, he would have been black flagged. Oh yeah, easily. So um, I think good fortunate break for them. Uh, turned terrific driving. Um, you know, just added to you know, just added to the uh, drama of yeah. the finish. So I mean, just, uh, just and just it going... and it was a beautiful late race late race pass into turn one that Van had to put on on Nick Tandy. Mm-hmm. Just to take the lead, so well done. But yeah, I mean, just to have both headlights go out as you're coming down the back straight, and then you go through, you come up, up over the hill, down the start finish line, then you go back up the hill to to go through for the next lap, and then not have the lights come on until he was somewhere out in the back hairpin at that point. Yeah, I mean, that is. Probably, Crazy. It, it there's so much darkness to yeah 
to go through and just commit that you're going at just about full speed to at that point in the race because you can't exactly. slow down yeah. <laughs> either. Um, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, just de- definitely one of the more exciting things to to happen. And plus, it, it's it's true darkness. It's not like it's it's not any of these FIA Grade One night race tracks that they go to where everything's lit up. It's no, you're yeah, you're in no. the dark. You're in the dark. So, um, all right, let's move on to uh, LMP two. Um, need one second to find it. Uh, it was number eleven, Orica, with Mikkel Jensen taking the win, followed home by the seventy-four Hunting Ranch, Orica of Philippe Fraga, and um, oh boy, it was the Riley car? That's what it was. County Village finished third, once again on a podium somewhere racing. In uh, GTD Pro, the Lamborghini one, fantastic. In GTD, yes, yeah, Pro. that was yeah, because then in second was the uh, the Risi. <laughs> yep, Daniel Thera. <laughs> All right, we just show up and finish on the podium. Don't mind us. Yeah, <laughs> did did they <laughs> win? A race this year? No, I don't. no, I, no, no. Did they me, did they win the endurance cup? I don't know. I have to go look. I just have the season points. Um, and then Aston Martin Harder Racing finished third in GTD. Alberto Costa Balboa won for Conquest Racing in their Ferrari two nine six, followed by Louis Spinelli in the Lamborghini second, and then uh, Aaron Tielitz and Frankie um, Monte Carlo finished. Uh, Third in class. I'm I'm sorry. They finished fourth in class. Yes, no, they finished third in class. Sorry. So there we have it. Uh, let's just move over to the points. Final points of the year. Dan Cameron and Philippe Nazar are your champions. Followed by Matthew Jaminet and Nick Tandy. Followed by Baudet and Van der Zander in the Cadillac. So good, good overall there. Um. On P2. Uh, Nick Boulay and Tom Dillman won the championship with Frogger and Gar Robinson second. Dial and Stephen Thomas third. GTD Pro. This is a bat- battle all year. Yeah. And and, it can- and this is this is what's even more crazy. So Lauren Heimrich in the right motorsports car went five laps down in this race. And Did- fought back. Due to some huh? uh, mechanical, yeah. electrical problem. Mechanical the issue. Yeah. Fought back. Then got caught up in the mess that Ricky Taylor got caught up in. Team sort of fixed the car, got it out, finished enough laps, and therefore took he won, won Lauren the, high, um, the championship. So, yeah. By, uh, oh, I'm sorry. That was, in, that, was in, uh, that was the AO car. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, but he... Brockty. He had, um, yeah, but Lauren Heinrich had a, he had a the, few he, different right, um, right. co-drivers throughout the year. Co-drivers, so yeah. He, after, he's, um, the champ- he's the sole champion. After Seb Prio left. Yeah, yeah Seb Prio left because of Multimatic uh, reasons. So, mm. anyways, um, Ross Gunn was second in the Aston Martin, and then Garcia and Sin finished third in the uh, Cadillac. I mean, Corvette, sorry. Um. I- um or go go ahead and do GTD. Go ahead. Oh, uh, GTD. Yeah. Uh, Philip Ellis and Russell Ward in the winner racing car finished uh, first in the points, followed by the Turner Motorsports guys in second, Robbie Foley and Patrick Gallagher. And then McK- Mikhail Grenier finished uh, third in the other Mercedes. So that's our points, point podiums. Um, so we're, we're, IMSA is done for the season. Yes. Except for MX5. <laughs> <laughs> um. Reese finished second in the endurance, endurance cup. cup. Yeah, nice. Two two points behind Paul Miller Racing in the oh. BMW. Um, Classic battle there. That's yeah. fantastic. And then uh, and they only show up for the endurance races. That's yes. even better. Yeah, and in, in the endurance. 
the the endurance races, it's five of them. That was this year. Yeah. It was Rolex twenty four, Sebring twelve, oh, yeah. uh, Watkins six hour, the Indy. six hours at Indy, and um, Petit Le Mans. Um, so yep. those are, those are your five races that make up that championship, which is a nice a nice one within the championship. Um, yeah. To do, but uh, yeah, yeah, and then I, I guess just to touch on the other classes. Um, uh, where is it? Windward took uh took the win, or I'm sorry, took the endurance cup championship in GTD, um and in GTP the number seven, Pans- Porsche Pansky, one Porsche uh one um handily actually in that one uh comparatively to some of the other classes, and That's then in fun. in LMP. Two, it was TDS. TDS. All right. P, right. So PR1, right? So they're going to, they no. all get an opportunity to go to Mons T- if they want. No, no, no. T- uh, oh, no. Interpol. Oh, Interpol. Inter Europe. They won the championship. Won the championship. championship uh, but right. TDS took the Endurance Cup. Endurance Cup. Yeah. So I think the, I think the championship winners, yeah, I don't know how it works, but anyways. So, anyways, yeah, the, there's bunch there's of cars, bids, bids bunch of teams go. could be going. Yeah, the, there yeah. are bids that IMSA gives out. Um, right, and teams don't all runs. necessarily take it because of yeah. the um, the cost of it and mm-hmm. things like that. So, anyways, it was fun. Yeah. All right, so we're off for a couple months. We go to uh, road, back down to Daytona for a November test. Then they're off until the roar, and then the season starts. So January. All right, uh, Bathurst, the one thousand, the great race on the great on the mountain. <laughs> uh, congrats to Brody Kostecki and Todd Hazelwood for the win. Started on pole and let and won the race. Finished closely by Brock Feeney and Jamie Wincup, and then Will Bro- Will Brown and Scotty Pye. The Red Bull the, the Red Bull team was nipping at the Erebus fields. So, good race though. It was mm-hmm. very much caution free. Uh, there was a couple cautions midway through the race, but the the caution within the final thirty or just around the thirty minute mark, uh, everyone came in the pits, made changes, and we had a thirty minute shootout on the hill. So it was it was fantastic. We had no interventions from ki- kangaroos this year <laughs> or wallabies. <laughs> so good time. Yeah. All right, and uh, for you supercar fans, uh, they are off to the Gold Coast next for the 500. And I believe that's another endurance race, so they use two drivers. That's that's always fun. All right, let's move on to uh, news. Uh, Michael Shank Racing has announced their driver lineup for their Acuras. Uh, It is a familiar pair in the lead car of Colin Brown and Tom Blunquist. In the second car, it will be Ranger Van Zander moving over from Wayne Taylor to Michael Shank. And Nick Yellowly moves from BMW to Acura. I think, um, not sure what to make of Van Zander and Yellowly, but, um, um, you know, I think Braun and Blomquist are a, a formidable pair. Yeah. So, yeah. have to be seen on the other two. Yeah, I, I guess it's interesting to, because who was. Oh no! It was it was Ricky that was, um, Ricky Taylor that was, uh, Delatraz's teammate when Wayne Taylor just had the, the sole Acura, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's interesting because the Taylor boys are not contracted to, um, at um, there was talk that they thought they were Acura drivers, but actually, they were they were uh, they were actually contracted to Wayne Taylor Racing. They have a choice. They could have picked, but they chose Wayne Taylor. So um, I think Jordan stayed with the, you know, he, he's obviously, you know, coming over and racing the Acura last two years, but now going to be running the Cadillac. So he brag, he's back to GM. So yeah, so we'll see. And they ran GM products for a long time too. So mm-hmm. in the early days in Grand Am and stuff. So it'll be, it'll be interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, don't have 
watch else on sports. Oh, other than Lamborghini is, I, I think they're, they're, they, they're trying to figure out if they can do two cars in WEC, um, you know, without compromising being an IMSA for just, you know, for the endurance championship, mm-hmm. because obviously the American market with Lamborghini is huge. Yeah. So there's a lot of talk about maybe they might forego the WEC program and go to IMSA, run run the endurance cup and maybe a couple other races and then maybe a full season attack because they don't they don't need to have two cars in that steer in WEC in IMSA. No, there's, there's you're, man, no... you're mandated two cars and three drivers in WEC, right? Y- For next year. Yes. Yeah. Which It, the the two car rule is getting iffy to some extent because now you're now you're limiting the amount of teams that can come in and join. Yeah, um, I'm not a I, I I I'm not a big fan of that. I I think it's like no. you know and, put an entry in. If you're a factory team, you want to run two cars, great. If you're a factory, you want to run one car, fine. You know, yeah. abide by the three driver rule, and who cares? Right. I you know? I mean it is. Well, I mean, I guess it's good and bad because on on one end we've we've been harping on Cadillac to get a second car over there. Second car, yeah. Um, and and now they are. And not yet. Yeah, well, now they have to. Um, yeah. Which is and it is looks good, like. But I mean, it have have it they does... announced who the, the formal drivers are over there for no. Jota? No. Okay, because the the thought is now that Borde's like not driving anything, that he'll probably be in the WEC series next year, oh. driving for them. So, since he knows the car, right? So, anyways, um, yeah, I, it's it's a f- fine line to walk because yeah, you want some manufacturers to have to, or you definitely want multiples mm-hmm. of all the cars for sure um, and yeah. then if you just have teams that will uh, come in and help run the program um, with with factory support kind of deal I, I think that's that's a good yeah. option too but um, I mean you, you kind of you also run into some of the growing pains that I think you saw Porsche uh have when they with their first year of the LMDH and then also Mm -hmm. because at the same time they were they had their new version of the GT3 car as well so I I think they probably spread themselves pretty thin in that Mm -hmm. go around Um, so so the process of just getting up to speed took a little bit a little bit longer but I mean they've they've clearly figured it out so it's it's um it it's not like it it was going to be something impossible for them but i mean just taking that same idea with other manufacturers that don't have the capacity yeah. that Porsche does um and and Porsche is is very uh customer racing um yeah oriented Fo- too yeah they have a focus so, yeah, oriented so i mean right. do, doing that is is definitely within their business model and you know if if it's not going uh full steam ahead right away like it, it'll take some time but it but they'll get there but with with other programs like it, it is kind of a question of if if you can get over that hump um so i mean if if lambo is is really spread thin between mm-hmm. um trying to get a the hypercar program to do its thing and uh and then also just the the normal support that they offer for the super trofeo series around the globe. Like that's, that's a whole nother thing in itself. Um, yeah. So uh, I mean, right. th- th- there are plenty of products or um, yeah, th- there's plenty of products that these manufacturers offer just aside from the, this top level car. And it's, it, mm-hmm. it is an added expense too. And you're doing it at the premier spot of, of sports car. Sports car reason. So, yeah. Um, just gotta get with it and roll with the punches. So that we do. I, I I hope they'll. I I hope every manufacturer can figure it out and get two cars 
in the race because I think two is always better than one, and it's nice to have a friend. Mm-hmm. In. Um, if it if it's not the same team running the car, like how it was with Acura and Meyer Shank at at the time with Acura, um, yeah, it was still nice to know that you could, if if they were a little bit open to each other, to try and find general speed when when both cars couldn't find anything on the same yeah. weekend. It's it's nice to have that um, option available to you to to even to just get some kind of um, info to figure figure it out. So, all right, all right. I think that covers our news item. Uh, so we move on to Formula One. Look ahead to this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Back in back in the US Coda. at Coda, and the championship drivers' championship battle continues. Yes. All right. So I don't know. Don't know. You know, just kind of playing it by ear here, waiting to see what's going to happen. Yeah, it, it's an odd. <laughs> This championship is becoming flipped upside down. Yeah, on a weekly basis. Yeah, on a weekly basis, and yeah. it's yeah, it's odd to like the the points battle hasn't been flip flopping back and forth at all, but right. it, it's just the fact that McLaren has this sniff of a chance to win the right. champ. To I'm I'm sorry that it looks like they'll they'll take the. Constructors, yeah, the constructors championship. Yeah, constructors, yeah. Ass- assuming that Red Bull is, assuming that both Red Bull and McLaren's form are going to continue the way it is. Yeah. Um, no, I, right. I don't know what Red Bull has in store, or if they have anything of updates, or have, yeah, have figured out what's wrong with the car because they've apparently identified that they found the root of the root cause of the problem. But problem. We'll, we'll we'll see how much it actually. Benefits and gets turned around, but I mean, I the, even though it seems like oh, Max and Red Bull just have this championship locked up, and you know, it's it's whatever. It's it's really not, and it's been one of the more exciting seasons since 2012, I would say, where you had just the uh, mul- multiple race winners and just about any race weekend you're turning up and you don't know who's going to win. Um, and it, it even has some, uh, some shades of 2009 as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. So it, it's, it's definitely that you're definitely seeing the payoff of this cost cap era. Yeah. Where teams are figuring it out and the top the, the bottom teams are are figuring out the, or at least the ones that can mm-hmm. i mean i mean mclaren is not a bottom team but they've been in the bottom for the past few few years so to see them figure something out and march their way forward and and get over that hump of being at the front of the midfield to now winning races is is good but you're you're also running into you're also seeing the issue of teams like Red Bull that yeah even though they have all the money like you if you just waste your opportunities and you don't realize it then you're going to be on your back foot pretty quick all right so uh shall we do our picks yes picks for the week um all right demon Nate you're up Nate got his picks in um and he has gone with a McLaren 1-2 with Lando taking wow. the win. Um, he's, he's also had Leclerc in third, and uh, he's picking Liam Lawson as his dark horse. Dark horse, okay. So. I am going to go with Leclerc. Leclerc, all right. No, actually, sorry. Take that back. I'm going to go with Sainz. Okay. I'm going to go Carlos. I'm going to go Carlos. I'll probably regret that pick. I will pick <laughs> Max second and Checo third. Alrighty, and your dark horse. My dark horse. I'm on the Yuki train still. Mm-hmm. Will be Yuki. Alrighty. Um, I've gone for Hamilton to win. Ah, uh, that's a good pick. I wouldn't be surprised if he won. No, I. But I could. 
could I see can, it like I he could, has a crap weekend too. Yeah, I, it it's it's going to be one yeah. of two ways. He he could either win the race or he's going to be like six yeah. or six or eighth. Yeah. Like it's yeah, it's or it's just cars out of contention type thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, gotcha. Then I'll I'll go with Leclerc second and uh, Norris will be third. Um, okay. So I dark horse. And my dark horse is going to be Carlo Pinto. Carlo Pinto. All right. Yeah. But and I mean, the he, race is he, on. Sunday. Sun, the race is Sunday, and for you fanatics here in the U.S., uh, it is on ABC, not ESPN, unless you oh, have the F1 Jesus. app and you don't have to listen to um, Skyport. AB. Oh, yeah, 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 I guess they'll do it that way, yeah. That's how they'll do it. It, it is going to be 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, so that's... And, uh, which is exciting. Yeah, so I mean, very exciting. Look, if it's gonna be, it's gonna be taking football and NASCAR on, so we'll see what yeah, happens. Yep, yep, get your quad box set up on your TV. <laughs> I unfortunately I'll be using the app, uh, so I'll my count won't be going against <laughs> defeating NASCAR. But for those of you on ABC, you'll be defeating NASCAR. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, I I guess it wouldn't, just... it wouldn't it wouldn't shock me if they drew a bigger number. Yeah. Just a small note. I mean, like even looking at our predictions, like, none of us are picking Max to win. No. So I mean, it's no. But it, could he win? Sure. Yes, he could. Like I, it. But the fact that we're all picking someone different of any of these four teams is great as it's, well. It's speaking volumes, yeah. So I mean, it, yeah. it's that that shows. The how, one thing uh, we don't know, the one thing that we don't know is what the elves at Red Bull did over the four day four weeks. Yes. Yeah. The, so, we shall see. The not mandatory vacation. Vacation where you so, could work in the car. Yes. So actually, yeah that anyway. that is a very good point. Like this is this has been yep. four weeks. You can actually actually work without having to worry about right. running to uh running to get a car together and to the track. I mean, I I know they have to ship the car overseas, but I mean, still. It's a lot of time in that in in the world for them. Yeah. Anyways, and on that note, good night. Thank you guys for listening to the Regulus Podcast, hosted by Christian Abbott, Sean Abbott, and Nathan Lavin. It's produced by Christian Abbott, and music is by Alex Wart and Harrison Taylor.